Hello champions and happy Thursday. Today's going to be a great day. We're going to learn how to multiply fractions. I know you can do it and so does Mr. Smiles. Let's dive right in. Let's start with the first do now question. Alexander bought 10 pounds of apples to give his gifts to 25 friends. He gave each friend the same amount of apples. How many pounds of apples did each friend receive? Well, let's start by figuring out what is being split up in this problem? Is Alexander splitting up the 10 pounds of apples or the 25 friends? He's splitting up the 10 pounds of apples. What division sentence then represents this problem? The division sentence that represents this problem is 10 divided by 25. I know that that creates the fraction 10 over 25. My answer isn't there, so I need to simplify. What's a number that goes into 10 and 25 evenly? 5 goes into both evenly. When I divide both 10 and 25 by 5, what fraction do I get? I get 2 fifths. The correct answer is A. Each friend gets 2 fifths of a pound of apples. Let's look at another example. Mr. Gibson bought a bag of 30 marbles from the store. Two thirds of the marbles were blue and the rest were green. How many marbles were blue? Well, I'm finding a fraction of a number. That means I need to multiply two thirds times 30. When I multiply two thirds times 30, what's the resulting improper fraction? Well, 30 times 2 is 60, and my denominator stays the same, 60 over 3. Now I can divide 60 by 3 to find the number of blue marbles. What is 60 divided by 3? Well, 3 goes into 6 2 times, 2 times 3 is 6 bring down my zero. Three goes into zero zero times with nothing left over. Mr. Gibson has 20 blue marbles. It says the rest of the marbles were green. I know there are 30 total marbles. 20 of them are blue. How can I find how many marbles are green? I need to subtract 30 minus the 20 blue marbles to find the difference. There are 10 green marbles. Now let's try some multiplying fractions by whole numbers. We've been doing this for the last two days. When I multiply 5 times 1 third, remember, I multiply the numerator times the whole number. What's 5 times 1? It's 5. My denominator stays the same. It's 3. And my next step is to change that into a mixed number. I need to divide the numerator, 5, divided by the denominator, 3. 3 goes into 5 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. And when I subtract, I have 2 left over. That gives me 1 and 2 thirds. When I multiply 2 thirds times 4, what's the resulting improper fraction? Well, 2 times 4 is 8 and the denominator stays 3, so the improper fraction is 8 thirds. When I change 8 thirds into a mixed number, what do I get? Well, 3 goes into 8 twice, 2 times 3 is 6, and when I subtract, I have 2 left over. That is 2 and 2 thirds. What is 1 half times 3 if I write it as an improper fraction? That gives me 3 halves. When I change 3 halves to a mixed number, what do I get? Well, 2 goes into 3 one time. 1 times 2 is 2, so there's 1 left over. That means I have 1 and 1 half. Go ahead and solve 3 fifths times 2. Write your answer as a mixed number. 3 fifths times 2 is 6 fifths. When I change that to a mixed number, 
it's one and one fifth. We've talked about multiplying fractions by whole numbers. Today we're going to talk about how to multiply a fraction times a fraction. I know that when I find the area of a square or rectangle, I can use the formula length times width. We can use area to help us discover how to multiply fractions. Let's read the first example on the top of page 2. The square below represents one square inch. Use the model to find an area of a square that has a length of one half inch and a width of one third inch. So, I know the length is one half inch. I'm going to split the square in half by drawing one line that goes across. The length of one side of my rectangle is going to be one half. I know the width is one third inch. I'm going to draw two lines that go up and down to separate my width into thirds. And I'm going to mark one third. So I know that the rectangle I'm working with has a width of one third and a length of one half. What fraction of the whole square inch? is represented by my rectangle? It's one-sixth. There's one piece shaded in out of six total pieces. So when I multiply one-half times one-third, I get one-sixth. Let's look at another example. The square below represents one square inch. Use the model to find the area of a square that has a length of two-thirds inches and a width of three-fourths inch. So, I know that the length is two-thirds of an inch. I'm going to cut my square into three pieces by drawing two lines that go across. I know that my rectangle is going to have a length of two-thirds, two of those lines. I know that the square is going to have a width of three-fourths inches. I'm going to draw three lines that go up and down to separate my width into fourths. And I know that my rectangle is going to take up three of those fourths. Now I'm going to shade in my rectangle. What will the denominator of my fraction be? How many total pieces is the square inch cut into? It's cut into 12 pieces. What will the numerator of my fraction be? How many pieces do I have shaded in? I have six pieces shaded in. So when I have a rectangle with a width of 3 fourths inch and a length of 2 thirds inch, the area is 6 twelfths. When I multiply 2 thirds times 3 fourths, I get 6 twelfths. Let's look at another example. This time we want a square with a length of 1 half inch and a width of 3 fifths inches. I'm going to draw one line across to make a length of one half inch. I'm going to draw four lines that go up and down to cut my width into fifths. Now I'm going to shade in the rectangle that I've created. What fraction of a square inch is represented by my rectangle? Well, it's cut into 10 total pieces, and I have 3 shaded in, so the area is 3 tenths. 1 half times 3 fifths is 3 tenths.
What I proved by finding area is that when I multiply fractions, I can simply multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then simplify if necessary. Remember, use multiplication to find a fraction of a number. So if you see a word problem that asks you to find a fraction of a number, multiply the fraction times that number. Let's do some examples. Roger has three-fourths gallon of milk. He drinks half of it. How much milk did Roger drink? To solve this problem, I need to multiply one-half times three-fourths. First, I can multiply the numerators. What's 1 times 3? 1 times 3 is 3. Now I can multiply the denominators. What's 2 times 4? 2 times 4 is 8. So, Roger drinks 3 eighths gallon of milk. Let's do another example. Michael has 3 fifths cups of juice. He gives two-thirds of it to his friend. How much juice did Michael give his friend? Two, I need to find two-thirds of three-fifths, or two-thirds times three-fifths. What is my resulting fraction when I multiply two-thirds times three-fifths? It's six over fifteen. 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 5 is 15. That's not my final answer. I need to simplify. What's a number that goes into 6 and 15? 3 goes into both. When I simplify 6 fifteenths, what's the resulting fraction? It's 2 fifths. Let's try another one. What's 3 fourths? Alan read for three-fourths hours last night. Jerome read for one-third as much time as Alan. How many hours did Jerome read? I need to find one-third as much as three-fourths, or one-third times three-fourths. When I multiply one-third times three-fourths, what's the resulting fraction? One times three is three. Three times four is twelve. I can simplify 3 twelfths. What's a number that goes into 3 and goes into 12? 3. I can divide both by 3. When I divide 3 divided by 3 and 12 divided by 3, what's the resulting fraction? The resulting fraction is 1 fourth. Jerome read for 1 fourth of an hour. Now here are 3 for you to try on your own. We'll start with the first one. What's two-thirds times one-fifth? Two-thirds times one-fifth is two over fifteen. Remember, I can multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. What's one-fourth times two-fifths? Write your answer in simplest form. One-fourth times two-fifths is 2 over 20. I can simplify by dividing both numbers by 2. The final answer is 1 tenth. Let's try another. What's 1 third times 3 tenths? Write your answer in simplest form. Well, 1 third times 3 tenths is 3 over 30. I can simplify by dividing both by 3. When I do, I get 1 tenth. You've done a great job on this video. Now it's time to move to the practice problems in your packet. Make sure that you rate the video so you can get your final score and record your final score in your packet. 